All right, guys, welcome back to Unlocked. I'm so excited today because I have Randy and Stephanie from Real Housewives of Dallas. How are you guys? <laughs> We're so, so good. good. Thanks for having us. No, <laughs> thank you for coming. So the way that this came about was actually really funny. I'm pretty sure we agreed to this at like midnight last night. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, to be fair, I reached out to Savannah like months ago and said, hey, we're coming in town for New Year's. And so we we're planning on hanging out. Yeah. And then I'm like, I need to message Savannah <laughs> at midnight. <laughs> at the Come bar. out. <laughs> yeah. At the, so and too, someone messaged me and was like, did their husbands tell them? about how I started crying when I saw them at FGL house last night. Oh. <laughs> so I got someone, like hysterically started crying when they saw you guys. Oh, so, that's, that's so sweet. That's I don't so remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's part of coming to Nashville. There's a lot of things that happen that you tend to not remember. So, okay. So let's catch up on all things. So Real Housewives of Dallas is kind of like on a hiatus right now. Yes. And I guess going from the beginning, how did you guys get cast for the show? I mean, Brandy had never watched or heard of Housewives before. And we were all at a cowboy game and we were talking about the different franchises. And then she was like, we could do this. So I think you went online, somehow found a casting in Dallas. And honestly, she's the one that did it for her and I. That's amazing. And yeah. Kind of funny. Well, what's even funnier is... And um, so I genuinely thought that the girls made up their taglines. So we're sitting at this table at a, a cowboy game. And uh-huh. so we made up our own taglines. And, and hers so, is like the best tagline yeah, in the world. And then I wanted to use it every year, but they, we don't make up our taglines. Okay, they do. What, what is it then? <laughs> so mine was, this ginger is the real deal and I have the red carpet to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. They didn't let you use right? that. Right? I know. I'm like, why? Why not? Instead, it They're was like, just, nobody like, wants to hear about your red here. carpet. I'm like, I do. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. That is uh, amazing. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. So then, it. J- how long did it take for it to like come to fruition? It actually took a little bit of time. I feel like I I know in the beginning because I, I know we were both very faith driven. Mm-hmm. So our husbands were like, oh my gosh, they're like going to become come off as like the Southern Bible beaters on yeah. the show, but then we really didn't. Mm-hmm. No. Well, and that's Instead, the we were like part. the to- the Tootin Barton sisters. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, we were so nasty season one, but <laughs> Travis always, he did some TV stuff in the past where he did like a movie and he did a MTV show with Mark Burnett and he's like, Stephanie, even if it's greenlit, the likelihood of you guys actually being on TV yeah. is so slim, like it's never going to happen. So even when we were filming, we both never thought that it would ever be on TV. So we were really nasty. We would just make each other laugh. And then oh yeah, the uh-huh. our producers would come out and they're like, can you not talk, talk about, about that? The yeah. <laughs> and then we would continue doing it. Like and it just, it, <laughs> it kind of escalated because we were like, oh, how could we piss them off today? Like, <laughs> so we would just like talk about things to annoy them and not realizing that that was going to be the show on TV. <laughs> yeah. And I remember when the first few episodes came out on Twitter, somebody was like, I don't know whether this is real or if it's like a parody of Real Housewives. These girls are so nasty. (laughs) So embarrassing. Well, see, I actually kind of love that because the whole Real Housewives franchise as a whole, y'all know it's all about like who can one up the other, Uh who's the most important, who has more, who. So like there's something refreshing about that narrative. (laughs) Also, we didn't know we were going to be a housewife until the day before we did our title shoot. So they called us the night before because our show show was titled whenever we would film it would be how to make it in Dallas and Travis and Brian would always laugh because we didn't work or anything and they're like how are you guys on a show called how to make it in Dallas it's ridiculous like we were just like hang out all day and you know with the kids um so but yeah so they just told us the night before they were like just to let you know we're gonna shoot tomorrow and you guys are housewives no no idea the whole time we were filming and oh then I was like, oh, I guess God. I should go watch some of those. And then I watched them and I was like, oh my God, these ladies are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the funny part. Cause like I've seen some here and there, you know, uh-huh. but I'll say I kind of started watching it on uh, when Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, when, um, Kathy Hilton came on. Yes. That was yes. kind of like when I, cause everyone was talking about, so I was like, I got to see what this is about. Chad, my best friend, loves all the Real Housewives stuff. And then, like, my parents will watch it. So I kind of got into it a little bit. But 
a lot of it's drama. Oh, yeah. And, like, it's... We kind of spoke about this before we came on. It's kind of, like, soul-sucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, what's crazy is <laughs> I felt like I was always in the drama a little bit, but it's because <laughs> you'd be sitting at a dinner table and be like, okay, we're not going to get to leave until something happens. And I'm like, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they would have, um, like, their cell phones, the producers, and they would have their cell phone, like, text message up what they would want us to say. And poor Brandy, she would always take the bait. She'd be, like, reading what they said and then a whole fight would start. I'm like, girl, I always, I'm always like, nope, not going to do it. (laughs) I'm like, that's fine. I'll be the first person to leave some TV. Bye guys. So, but you do, it's, it's interesting because, you know, people get mad at the people who are the most dramatic, but you can't leave. So you'll be there till like 3am until something interesting happens when it's a whole like Y'all are welcome. Y'all are all welcome. (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot. That's exhausting. Yeah. So in y'all's like when doing Real Housewives of Dallas, who was like the good guy? Who was the bad guy? Oh, she was always the good, (laughs) the good guy. She was always, but like out of the whole cast. Cause like you two came in as friends. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then was that an issue with like the other women that you two were so close? I I think so a little bit. Maybe a little bit, but I also feel like it saved us because we always had each other's back. We were always like, we always stuck up for each other. We were always leaning on each other. Um, But I definitely think that it made some of the other women maybe a little uncomfortable because they knew that. We it was were you always too. like we mm-hmm. we were always like together. Yeah. Um. I can't imagine doing it without a friend. I think it would be so scary. It was scary enough even having her. Um. But I don't know. I mean, maybe sometimes. But it's interesting. I like everyone's kind of fake nice to each other. But mm-hmm. it's I always say it's like you know high school. Everyone's running for prom queen. Everyone wants a center diamond. Yes. So, and some people will do anything to get it. And that's the scary part when you, somebody has nothing to lose and you have a family and, you know, children. And, um, I don't know. I just never wanted to leave the franchise believing that I ruined somebody's life. That was mm-hmm. my only thing. Like I never wanted to feel like I had a regret of, you know, completely destroying somebody, but I feel like some of the people did not care. And see, and that's really hard because the aftermath of it, Mm -hmm. people don't realize like the, and that's what we've always said. My parents always told us, they were like, these producers don't care Mm -hmm. about you. Like they don't care about you. They don't care about your family. They will act like they care about you in the moment Mm -hmm. until they get what they need. And then they don't care if your life is falling apart off camera. They don't, they don't care about any of that as long as they get what they need. And that was so obvious to me, like the older I got, because I would see, you know, I was more careful about putting my relationships out there because it was never my narrative. Mm -hmm. It was always their narrative of wanting it to be funny and a comedy and all these things. And I was like, but that's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Like I was with someone for four and a half years. We were dating. We got engaged. We called it off. We went back to dating, but they don't want to touch on any of that. Yeah. And that was the hardest part was like, okay, what, how can I get my truth out there? When no one else is allowing that. Yeah. Right? And that was the hardest part, I think. It is well, hard. Yeah. And I think that that's why, I mean, because I announced that I was leaving the show before they'd even taken it on hiatus, just for me, because it, it, you reach like a point where you're like, okay, I mean, I'm going through my, I, I, with the end for me was my mother-in-law passing away. And then we had, and um, I was pregnant with our fourth child. And then there's a cheating scandal out there. Mm-hmm. And I just thought there was no way around it to where I could protect my family or um, it was just going to be public no matter what. And so go away gracefully and just Mm -hmm. be like, okay, this is the end for me. And I've enjoyed sharing my life with everyone. But at this point, like it's time to step away. And I think that it, the hard part is, is that you, I love doing it. Like Mm -hmm. I love being um, there with my best friend and I loved like, and to like the, get paid to actually yeah. hang out with your friend. Yes. And, uh, but then the hard part is, is that people don't know, they think they know, mm-hmm. and then they judge you and they think that they know your husband. They think they know your kids. And when they attack your husband and your children and you're like, no, you know, we all go through shit, you know? Well, and that's and, the thing. Sorry. It's just because, yeah, no, no, yeah. <laughs> but even whenever the stuff came out that you're talking about with Brian, it was like, so it showed such a gross side to the people that watch because um, the fans would send her daughter the video mm-hmm. and uh. she learned about it, not from Brandy, but from a fan who, you know, that she, it was just so gross because she's a kid. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. at the end of the day, that's, it just. Now, when all this was going on, were you filming? Like, did any of it were, get caught on the show or no? They chose to bring it all up at our reunion, but it was never. Mm-hmm. And it was just, a, it was almost like I taking a beating a yeah. bit because like, I'm like, oh my gosh, we are still mourning the loss of my mother-in-law. My, my 10 year old was in the car with accident and she's dealing with, you know, that tragedy herself and, you know, yeah. the PTSD that goes with that. And then I've just had a newborn and they're, you know, wanting me to address if I'm going to choose to stay with my husband or not. Yeah. And to me, it was just, it was disgusting. And well, and too, because Everyone goes through, Mm -hmm. whether it's cheating, whether it's relationships go through their own trials and tribulations. So the fact of the matter is yours was just publicized. Like it was just, and that's, I couldn't imagine. And like looking, I guess, from like a child's perspective of like how you chose to just gracefully walk away and put your energy in a place that was more beneficial Mm -hmm. is very yeah. like respectable and yeah and I mean, my husband was I mean he was hurting so bad you know mm-hmm. and this video that resurfaced because it had been out before years before like I think it was like season two at the end of yeah, season one or season it's two it's just yeah. so bizarre it's like someone re put it out there to hurt us and well, I'm so, pretty sure you've got an idea of yeah. who was behind that <laughs> like, <laughs> oh but it's just crazy because it's like my husband was hurting just about just as bad as I was because I mean he he lost his mom and um and then this all comes out and he but he was very straightforward with me like look if you want to leave me you can leave me like yeah. I will give you anything and everything you want I will take care of you the rest of my life but I love you and you know and, and there's just, things that you work through and there's yeah, things yeah. and it's I've said that it's no one else's place to tell you how to work through your own trauma and your own and people act out out of hurt mm-hmm. and trying to fill a void. And then once you do that, you realize, OK, I can't truly fill that void with whatever it may be, sex, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just can't. And yeah. until you get the help to get to the root of the issue, then it's, you're never going to be successful as a human being. Yeah. And so now though, you guys are good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We are, I mean, we're amazing. Um, he's here in Nashville. I Um, love that. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, we're amazing. And I mean, we're thriving. We're better than we've ever been. I mean, we have four amazing, beautiful children (laughs) that drive me crazy. (laughs) But I mean, I think like, you know, I think everybody goes through their own things. And I think uh, there was a time in our life where, um, you know, we weren't putting each other first and, Mm -hmm. and we were just focused on other things. And I don't think that he in any way was trying to hurt me. I think that he just made a poor choice Mm -hmm. and he got caught. And what would you say was your, what would you say saved uh, like I mean, allowed you to kind of bring it back around full I mean, circle. I, I mean, I'm very faith based and I think, I mean, I think God is, is a forgiving God and he's already, he's already forgiven us. And so I think like being more, you know, God-like and I have Jesus in my heart and I, I, I want to love everybody and, mm-hmm. you know, and forgive. And, um, but also I think there's, there's more to it that, I I don't know if he really did anything other than like this little video because yeah. we were in Vegas and we were at a dual bachelor bachelorette party and um, they went to one club. We went to another club, but we met up that night and yeah. stayed in the same room. So it's like, okay. and two, just so there's nothing else comes mm-hmm. out. What exactly was the video? Cause it wasn't so, anything. Yeah, it was it. I mean, it's, it, he, they're at a club in Vegas and he, Cause when you say video, yes, you know, it's oh, yeah, and and you're thinking like a full yeah, I mean, they're, they're literally at a club and, um, he, there's a girl talking to him and then he kisses her on her forehead. Yeah. So see, and that's the, th- it's like, again, and it's not to mm-hmm. make light of anything and anyone yeah. that has been cheated on or any, it's just, everyone's story is different mm-hmm. and people do things. And when alcohol is involved and when, 
trauma and all these other things are involved, it's like the recipe for the perfect storm. Yeah. Yeah. And so would you say that having kids involved was definitely another? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm such a loyal, like friend, mom, whatever you want to say, but I'm such a loyal person that like deep down in my heart, like when I let it ask myself and when I pray about it, I feel like it's, it, you know, like it's not, it's yeah. not what it, what it appeared to be. Yeah. And, and yeah. And what I love is that some things just have to completely like break you apart mm-hmm. to build you back even better. Yeah. No, I, I, mean, I, I feel like this whole thing, marriage in general is just a roller coaster and you go through things and, and you hear things and you like just th- everything. I mean, I, I know so many f- people that ha- their marriages have been destroyed, but yeah. also, mm-hmm. um, and then not to judge, but they also don't have a faith based, um, where they, that's instilled in mm-hmm. them. And I think for me, it just is. And, um, and I, I love him. Like I genuinely love him. He's mm-hmm. my high school sweetheart. Yeah. And we did, you know, we had our differences in, in college and we went our separate ways, but then we came back together. So I feel like, I know for me, you know, that's all, that, I don't know. I don't even know how to say it. But No, I yeah. am too. I think what I love so much about the story is I feel like in my generation, like, it's divorce is looked upon as just like, oh, well, if it doesn't work out, you can just get mm-hmm. a divorce, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, it's, it's easy, you yeah. know? And I hate that. I hate it because it's like, it's seen as like an easy way out instead of digging deep and truly working things out and figuring out the issues. And I think that's why I called off my engagement. Cause I was like, I don't want to get to a place to where it's like, all right, I'm getting divorced, yeah. you know? And mm-hmm. like, if you truly, are having, I don't know. It just, I feel like my generation looks at it as just like so disposable. Yeah. Unlocked with Savannah Chrisley is sponsored by better help. This holiday season, do something special for a person in your life. You give yourself a gift to raise your spirits and not just for the day. The holidays can be a really, really tough time between managing family dynamics, racing from thing to thing, braving the cold and dark weather, And sometimes it's filled with grief. So it's normal to feel down. Having someone to talk to about how you're feeling and what you can do about it truly is a gift. Coming from someone who has a therapist, it has taught me so much. I'm learning coping skills, how to set healthy boundaries, self-empowerment, and dealing with so much trauma. So I encourage you, to give yourself the gift of BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Savannah. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H, BetterHelp. Now, I will say even like, with some of our friends, we've had, you know, I feel like the older we get, the more like people you never think would get divorced. Mm -hmm. Like it's always the people I'm like, wait, they were like, never fought. They were perfect. And they end up getting divorced. But I do think a lot of it is when things get bad, people tend to run away instead of like really try to stay and fight it out and do counseling. And, Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard whenever you have kids, because I mean, I will say I, and I, whenever that happened with you and Brian, I think you guys were at probably a really devastating place as a family, but a really strong place because so many bad things had happened that they were leaning on each other so much that they had a really strong, deep bond at the time. But I I remember whenever that happened because it was during spring break, I was with my family and I was getting calls left and right from Bravo because nobody could get a hold of her. And um, it was just crazy. Yeah. Well, and it was, it just, everything was it's so bizarre because n- maybe a year before that, um, you know, there, I had 
filmed something on my Instagram and and taken it down because it was insensitive and and people were saying that it was racist. Well, somebody screen recorded it, reposted it, and then I became this racist and uh. canceled. And and during that time, like I went through like a very deep dark depression and where I was contemplating like taking my own life. And I remember being on my hands and knees, crawling to Brian and in the middle of the night, cause I, I was so weak and hurting so bad because I, and I never thought that I was like somebody that really cared what other people thought about mm -hmm. me. And then when everyone is like just tearing you apart, telling you that you're this horrible person and people would even say you should kill yourself. And so it started, I, I let the, those horrible negative things hurt me so bad and just kill my soul. And, um, and I crawled to Brian because I was like literally contemplating and on my hands and knees. And I, I told him and he got a bed, picked me up off the ground and said, no, you're not. And like, what well, that's, what's crazy is like, not to cry, but sorry, but that's, what's crazy is that like, people don't really know everything that you've been through with somebody. And no. when somebody is with you and supports you and loves you during your deepest, darkest hour, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to give up on them. If they make yeah. a mistake and they made a yeah. poor decision. And especially when you put, you know, like you said, alcohol or whatever it is that, that inhibits your, your decision-making. And, um, and I think that that's the thing that I don't think people realize is that when you have a history with someone and that you love so much and that, um, and they've been there during your darkest hour, like, it's just like, you can't you replace can't that. You can't just, yeah. no. And throw you, it away. Yeah. And that's, it's so crazy because the whole you know, I started on TV at 15. So, and I'm now 25. So 10 years later, and I, I was, you know, in my teenage years, I tried committing suicide. And it was due to, I mean, a multitude of things, but also the things that people would say. And it's like, especially during those years, you're like, these are the most impressionable. Yes. Yeah. And like, you've got people saying like, I, we were out in LA filming our spinoff show and I was diagnosed with like endometriosis. I was, and I had, I've always been like a thin, you know, person yeah. and I competed in pageants and it was just grow Like being on TV, you know, you're like, all right, I have to look perfect. I have to, mm -hmm. it all hours. And I was started this medication. I literally gained like 30, 40 pounds in like three months because of my endometriosis and people would just come at me like, Oh, it looks like you ate yourself. Look like, looks like you ate yeah. one too many cheeseburgers look like, you know, and you are like, what, who I am I? Like, yeah. this is who yeah. people are telling me I need to be. This is who, and there was just so many different things going on and just having people come at you and, you know, just think they know your life. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And there was so many times to where it's like, I just, kept running and running and running. And then you finally get to a point where you're like, I, I can't run anymore. Yeah. And I also can't deal with feeling how I feel. And, but it's so crazy because no one ever knew, like we hit it so well, like producers didn't know, no one knew a thing. And it was so, I just think it's such an empty feeling that you have. And it wasn't until yeah. I would say three years ago that I, you know, and too, I grew up in a household. My dad's like a very prideful person and it was growing up, especially too on TV. It was like, all right, we don't talk to therapists, you know, like mm -hmm. we talk to each other. That's what you do. Like no mm -hmm. one on the outside needs to know any of our business, whatever it may be. And it's so crazy now though, watching my parents because they are in therapy like twice a week, you know, like my dad swears by his therapist. And I went to like an intensive therapy program about three or four years ago. And I say it was like a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. And it was finally the moment where you realize like, Hey, I need help, you know, mm -hmm. and I can, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay yeah. to be who you want to be. And I say that was like my kickstart to yeah. kind of you know, breaking apart, being at the lowest you've ever been. So now, okay, I can start to be who I want to be. I yeah. can, it was just a very, people don't realize Cats their words. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And even throughout this whole legal scandal that we've been going through, the things that people have said, I'm like, how can you say that to mm. a child? And like, that's what we were going back to your daughter and 
things mm-hmm. that she had found out is like, how do grown adults think yeah. it's okay to like, to do that, to do yeah. that. Mm-hmm. And to, and my favorite part is like, you go to their profile and it's like mother lover of Jesus. Yes. And always, yeah. always. <laughs> and so I'm like, like, yes, you're so right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, this does always. not make sense to me. Oh, it is. It is hard. I will say hard. reality TV. I think it does really tear you down to a point where people don't, before I did housewives, I remember when it first came out, Brandy and I were so excited. I just thought everyone would be excited for you. Right. I did not think people would be so hateful. And whenever it came out, people would judge us never seeing one episode just on the way that we looked, the fact that we were in, I mean, just the fact that we were in Dallas, it was crazy. Um, and I would say, especially the first two years, and my self-esteem would rise and fall based on each episode. Like if I had a good mm-hmm. episode and people loved me, I would think, okay, I'm okay. And if I had a bad episode and people were coming at me, like I would be on the ground, like just so, so, so depressed. Um, and after season two, I did a very intensive uh, 10 day therapy retreat um, called the Hoffman process and completely changed my life. But I had to like you know, give away my cell phone and my tablet yeah, and like I really work some, on myself. That's yeah. basically what mine was like. No yeah. electronics, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I remember that first day I was like, it's so crazy. I'm like patting myself, like where's my phone? And I was like, Oh yeah, I don't have it. Oh. It's so crazy. But with the one that I went to, I don't know if yours was the same, but you didn't, you used your childhood nickname, not your real name. So nobody knew who you were, what you did. Um, and, um, It was interesting because a lot of the people that were there were children of like very famous celebrities and you didn't find that out until the very end. And they had so much trauma they were carrying with them because of what they saw their parents go through. It's just very interesting. And I always wonder like the way that they saw, I know Brandy probably feels the same way, but they see you go through such dark times Mm -hmm. and it's hard to hide that from him. It's them. It's hard not to be in the bedroom crying whenever you feel like your life is falling apart. Um, and it's, I always wonder like how that affects them in the long run. Yeah. Well, see, it's crazy yeah. because I feel like I've seen it firsthand, at least with me, you know, mm-hmm. I got through 15 years, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I got to be a normal kid for 15 <laughs> yeah. years. And then, but Grayson, you know, he's 16 now, but he started TV at five, yeah. like five yeah. or six. And it's so like, it's kind of sad to watch him because he's such an adult at 16 years old. And especially now with everything my parents are going through and watching him go through it, it's like, I look at him sometimes and I'm like, you are not a kid. Like you're, and it's so hard because I'm like, I want you to be a kid, but he speaks about things. And I'm like, this is not a normal 16 year old. Yeah. And to think of like, he doesn't really remember his life before TV. Like he just remembers like filming and he had a job and he, cause that's what we always told yeah. him was like, this is a job, you know, like people are depending on you people. So he didn't get to have a normal childhood and now he's in therapy. He's, you know, mm-hmm. working through it, but it does, it completely, I feel like changes you grow up so fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's like, for me too, it's, I go to date and it's like, I don't date people my age. Cause I'm like, I can't relate to like <laughs> it's yeah. 17 years old. I was worried about like a mortgage and health insurance <laughs> and a car <laughs> payment. And I was like, I'm not worried about like going and getting drunk at a party, yeah. you know, like there was yeah. so much more and you grow up so fast. It is. It's really hard on kids. I remember season, I think it was season one. I, I was just, I've always been such a people pleaser and anytime they wanted my kids to film and my kids were so little, I would be like, okay, yeah. And I would kind of make them put on a show. And in Housewives, we're the only ones that get paid. Like my husband, our kids don't get paid. So we're the only ones that get paid. And there was a scene where I think that we were going to the, we lived on the Four Seasons at that time. And we had to get in the golf cart and go to the Four Seasons, I think to see your kids, if I'm not mistaken, or somebody they were really excited to see. And the producers kept having the kids like go out of the house, get into the golf cart, and then they would drive off a little bit and then they'd be like, okay, we have to do this again. And they did it like 10 times yeah. and to the point to where my kids were like having a little temper like tantrum, melt they were melting down, down. Yeah. They were very young. And when I got there, I was flustered. It was because my kids were so upset. They were upset. And I remember it hit me. I'm like, they are setting 
my children up for failure and I'm for sale. Obviously I'm getting paid, but they're not for sale. I'm not going to have them go to school and be humiliated because mommy wants to be on the Real Housewives of Dallas. It's not fair to them. So after that, I only let them film when they wanted to. It was always an option. Do you want to do this? If so, here's your day rate. Like they had me pay them a little day rate. Um, But I never, I really didn't have them on that much because I realized that they weren't even using the kids in a way that was fair to them. Yes. Well, that was the thing with Chloe because Chloe's 10 now. So, I mean, she was on TV starting at a year old, I think. Mm -hmm. And these producers were like, no, she has to take a nap. Like Mm -hmm. she, you know, Mm -hmm. they nap till, I don't know, like four or five, whatever it is. And they were like, well, we need her to film. And it's like, well, no, like yeah. she has to nap. And if she doesn't, she's going to be a nightmare. Yes. And then, like you said, it's just they set them up for failure. Mm-hmm. And Chloe, even yesterday we were in the car and she was like, when can I do your podcast? And I was like, <laughs> what are you going to talk about? I'm like, you're 10 years old. She goes, um, life. And I was like, what do you know about life at 10 years old? And I was like, what are you like? How's growing up on TV? And she goes, well, you know, it's fun when it's real. But when they just tell me all the things to say, it's yeah. not fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's like at 10 years old, I'm like, oh God, like uh, yep. it definitely, yeah. you know, it leaves an impression and it's so hard now. Like I said, we all keep like therapists on payroll, like yeah. the kids, us, everyone's in therapy and it's been a game changer, mm-hmm. but just reality television's hard. It's, it's <laughs> so hard. It's so hard. I know my my now 14 year old really struggled with it. She, she wasn't a fan of anything. Like she wait when the crews would come in, she would hide their materials. And so then they couldn't find it to work. (laughs) (laughs) She played their game. Um, but yeah, she really struggled with it where we ended up having to move her schools even because of, you know, because she can't control the editing. And she was, I mean, I, I called Stephanie multiple times just crying because when your kids Mm -hmm. like, yeah, your kids hurting, you're hurting. And so my mom has always said, she's like, you're only as happy as your saddest child. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. what my mom so says. Yeah. So true. So true. And it's like, it's crazy because I feel guilty in a lot of ways because I, I was, it was something that I chose to do and my family supported me, but like she said, they, we, they didn't get paid. Yeah. And, but they well, still you were make working. The best decisions that you know how to make at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I've realized. Like as my parents' child, the older I get, it's like they did the best they could mm-hmm. at that time with what they knew, with what they were provided with. Like they made the best decision for us that they knew how to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, it's like you, I feel like, and too, I grew up thinking like my parents are like superheroes, you know, mm-hmm. like they make yeah. no mistakes. They do, you know, like in that they can fix anything. Yeah. And then it's like the older you get, you realize like, no, that's, like as a child, that's putting a lot on your parent mm-hmm. for them to feel like they can never mess up and that they can never do anything wrong. And now as an adult, I'm like, okay, they're like a normal human being. Like they make yeah. mistakes yeah. just as I do, just yeah. as everyone else does. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, we look at our show and it's like, okay, it's, there's negatives to it, but there's also been it's kind of like home videos for us, you know, with like the little ones and watching them grow up on TV and stuff like that. But it's definitely, you know, there's some moments that you're like, Oh, why did I say what they wanted me to say? (laughs) Yes. Been there. done that. She would be like, why did I do that? I'm like, well, I remember I told you not to do it. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. There were multiple things. I know. Like even after production wrapped, like the last season and I just had the baby, they wanted to come in and get some lines. And I was like, I just don't feel right with this. And Mm -hmm. they came in and I had, I literally just had the baby and I was on, I, you know, I had a C-section and had all these blood transfusions because it it didn't go well. It's not great having babies in your (laughs) forties. So they show up and they want these lines and I'm like, so out of it, I read the lines and all it did was make me look more of a horrible person. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, I, I would have never said that. Uh, and I remember I telling them that too. And then they kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And I was like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. yeah. And too, that's the hardest part too, is like these wild lines that they mm-hmm. get. And so like a normal person that's listening, that hasn't 
been involved in reality television, they will come back to you one day and just be like, Hey, I need to get audio from you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you say these things and then they will put it in a spot that you makes you yes. look yes. so bad did that you, you didn't yes. say it in did that moment. Did you know that she can fart on command? <laughs> I died. <laughs> She's like, I didn't say that. I'm like, yeah, yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And every year I did an interview, people would ask me to do it during my interview. I'm like, what? I cannot what? really do that. I swear. Stop that is it. not a talent. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my She's, gosh. It's like, ridiculous. It's so funny. <laughs> so would you guys go back? Oh. to reality television. I think I, I think I would go back to reality television, but I think it would have to be something that was more lighthearted and fun and wasn't so drama driven, even yeah. though I know drama sells, but yeah. I think it would have to be more for the fun and laughter mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know, because I, more on your terms. Yeah. 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 I think so. Well, it's funny. Justin Anderson. I don't know if you guys know who oh, that I is. I love him. He's so, amazing. I love him to death. He lives here in Nashville now. And he came on my podcast like a week or two ago. And he's like a real housewives fanatic. Loves Aww. it. Like, and he's all about it. But we were talking, we were like, we need to do a show of like all ex reality TV people uh-huh. and Nashville, you know, like <laughs> yes. all of us together that have become <laughs> friends. And like, I was like, that would be so fun. Like, it's lighthearted. Yes. There's a little drama. There's a little, you know. Yeah. Stuff like that. But it was funny because Justin and I were talking, you know, he, he's Kristen Cavallari's best friend. And we were talking about just Nashville, how small of a town it is. And with like Kristen and Jay and, you know, their show, yeah. because it's no longer a thing. But there was was kind of the same reason. It's like their kids, you know, they didn't want on TV. They didn't. So they ended it. And I was like, you know what? There's something to be said for that. Mm-hmm. Like there's something... Yeah. But for, you know, for us, our show, it's always been fun. Like, yes. it's, yeah. it's been, it was more of a comedy. No, like, that yes. would be our dream. We yes. always yeah. talk about that. Yes. Like, we'd be like, that's... She's the one who got me watching your show. Cause, it's so funny. But by the way, to be fair, I don't watch any TV. And then she yes. tells me what to watch. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch it. This, watch this. <laughs> but and it was I'm... always so lighthearted. For Brandy and I would talk and be like, I am so jealous that, like, you guys had that. Because that's something that I think whenever we signed up, we thought it was going to be more kind of like what you guys are. Just yeah. fun, funny. We're friends, like just very easy things. And it didn't really pan out that way in the end. Um, but that's I, even I would be at the, you know, nail salon and HGTV would be on. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm so jealous of them. Like, it's always somewhat of a pretty bow at the end. Like, it's packaged yeah. nicely. Well, it's not it's, too dark. And that's the thing, though. It's like you always want what you don't mm-hmm. have. Yeah. Because then it's like we watch a show. Now, I'm not saying we want to be like Real Housewives, uh-huh. you know, because <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of drama. But with our show, it was more like pigeonholed into a comedy yeah. that you weren't allowed to have a bad day. Yes. And so for us, that's where I know for me personally, like the depression kicked in because it's like I our whole life is falling apart, but you have to walk out the door and mm-hmm. crack a joke and laugh and act like it's not, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. even throughout all the years of all this legal stuff going on, it was never once touched on, on the show because we weren't allowed to touch on it, you know, mm-hmm. and that, so then it puts you, it, it puts you in a bad spot because it makes it look like, Oh, you're lying. You're doing this. You're not being yeah. truthful, but it's like, we weren't allowed to, but that wasn't yeah. your show. Yeah. That's what, not that what they wanted. Yeah. So you did something. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah, I totally get that. I feel like, um, I've always been such a people pleaser and super hard on myself. Um, and even when housewives came on, there was a part, can't, I think it's called uh, imposter syndrome mm-hmm. where you kind of feel like you're in something that you shouldn't be in. Like, I always felt like a little bit of an imposter. Like I'm a small town, like country girl from Oklahoma. And, um, the first season, I think not knowing what we were was nice, but after we were supposed to, you felt like you had to fill the housewife shoes. It was yeah. very intimidating and hard. Um, and then you had like Erica Jane come on Beverly Hills and she was all glam hair, makeup, like perfectly put together. And you just feel like you have to almost fit a mold that isn't created for you. Mm-hmm. Um, that isn't really a part of it. It was like Brandy was really great. She always was very true to herself. Like she was like, I remember Other than when she read all the lines that they wanted her <laughs> yeah, to read. Yeah, besides <laughs> all the lines they wanted. But I remember we would be at like a dinner and she would, she has this thing when she drinks where she puts her hair up like this really messy bun. And then <laughs> it's normally when I'm like, okay, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, 
the producers were like, oh my gosh, why is she doing that? <laughs> but she was always Stop. herself. Like, I feel like you never really, I mean, you would read the lights, but you never, you never got into that where you felt like you had to do like hair, makeup, all this glamour oh, yeah. stuff and everything. Oh, yeah. Like you were always wore what you wanted, did what you wanted. Like you were very authentically yourself. Yeah. Going into 2023, I promised myself that I was going to eat a little cleaner. You know, day by day, we'll get cleaner and cleaner because you can ask any of my friends. I am a junk food eater, bar food, all the good things. <laughs> but Green Chef has truly helped me to kind of navigate this new lifestyle that I'm living. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you and not the other way around. I don't want to spend tons of time slaving away in the kitchen, and it's just time that I really don't have. Green Chef makes everything super easy with meals being delivered directly to your door. Everything is already portioned out. You have all the right ingredients, and you know exactly how much to use. Another thing that I love is Green Chef is offering 10-minute lunches. Each week's menu includes two convenient, low-prep, and nutritious lunch recipes ready in just 10 minutes, and there's absolutely no cooking required. It's perfect for when you're on the go or pressed for time at the office. So I really hope that you guys will try Green Chef because it's absolutely amazing, and it also has options for every lifestyle. Keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast fit, Mediterranean, and gluten free. Go to greenchef.com slash unlocked60 and use code unlocked60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, go to greenchef.com slash unlocked60 and use my code unlocked60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. For years, we've all heard about AdvoCare. And AdvoCare is very well known for their AdvoCare Spark, which enhances mental focus, contains amino acids, 20 vitamins and minerals, an effective amount of caffeine, all while being sugar-free. It also comes in 14 flavors. A lot of questions that people ask are, what's it sweetened with? How much caffeine is there? When would I use it? Well, it's sweetened with sucralose. How much caffeine? 120 milligrams, which is equivalent to a small cup of coffee. We recommend that you use it at least 15 to 30 minutes prior to activity or any time you feel a need. All you need is an 8-ounce bottle of water and one stick of spark, and you're good to go. So there you have it. That's AdvoCare. Now, let's try to unlock your healthiest self by using AdvoCare's products. I mean, but I, it's also kind of, I mean, because I was, I'm actually originally from Tennessee. Are you? I didn't know that. Yeah. Where at? Um, Millington, really? outside of Memphis. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And then I moved to Texas whenever um, I was in eighth grade, and that's where I okay. met Brian. But, um, but we were, my dad was military, so I like did not grow up with the finer things of life. And so, and I've always like, Brian will be like, why don't you splurge and go do this? But I just, I've always been very conservative with my money. And mm -hmm. um, even though, I mean, you know, we're fine, <laughs> but um, yeah. So, but you've always been so good with your money. Yeah. Like you've just, always, yeah. Yeah. See, so. yeah. I, I'm not. Yeah. No. I mean, <laughs> how, heck, you know, but <laughs> Yeah, I've I've learned to be better. Yeah, I've learned to be better. Yeah. No, I mean it's just it's. I mean I feel like I've gotten a little little, you know. Yeah, you'll splurge here and there. Yeah, <laughs> here and there. What so. would y'all <laughs> say is like the biggest misconception of yeah. you individually? Because there's obviously a version think. of you that yeah. the world thinks that they know versus who you know that you are. Um, like, like oh kind gosh. of a funny one is, um, everyone always thinks I would say both of us that we love to talk about poops and farts and <laughs> they will come up and tell us that, you know, they need to go poop oh, right now yes. or yeah. What happened? Like at the airport, wait, the airport, tell her the story. Be this beautiful lady, um, was, she boards the plane, says hi to Brian and I, and she's like, I saw Stephanie too. Oh my God. And then. And we go to the bathroom after we get off the plane and then I'm standing there waiting on Stephanie and the lady walks by me, 
goes into a stall, then runs back out. And she's like, I've just been thinking about you the whole, and Stephanie the whole flight because I have, to have had to fart. And I've been holding it in and now I'm going to go fart. And I was like, yay. Like, Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. So that's, I mean, it's really funny. We always it's, laugh. But that people, kind of stuff happens all the time. People always it's tell us when they need so a random. toot. It's so funny and so random. But I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, or they'll, so they'll message us like the nastiest story. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I can't hear about this. Like, I yeah. why I opened myself up to walk in. It's so kind of ridiculous. It's so when really, ridiculous. I'm like, oh gosh, it's just. And I think also, like at that point, um, when we were filming season one, talking about pooping and farting, I mean, we had little kids in diapers. So it was yeah. like, that was you know, like, I was like oh, yeah. we're changing another yeah. shitty diaper. Like, yeah. yes. like that was your normal. Yeah. yeah so it was, yeah. And that's what kids talk about. So, <laughs> yeah. So we, and we became those children. Yes. yes. I'm trying to think of a misconception. I would say, um, oh, I'm trying to, I mean, people always think I'm very depressed all the time yeah. um, because I talk about depression on the show and I have dealt with it my whole life. Yeah. Um, but I, but I'm not always depressed. I'd like for people to know that I'm doing fine. Um, but I do think people, it's funny. I feel like people worry about me a lot and they'll always message me. And they're always yeah. like, if I don't post for a few days, they're like, are you okay? Are you, you know, how's your, but, um, I think sometimes that like I have ups and low, like ups and downs, but I do have my ups. So, and I don't think people really understand that. I would say that like people, I think always think I'm like in my room crying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, I have, that's kind of, I've like normalized yeah. this talk on my podcast because I didn't get to do it on the show. Mm -hmm. And I've, and we've seen it a lot in the media recently of very high functioning people yeah. that are suffering from depression that end up leading to suicide, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, the Miss USA, Chelsea, who mm -hmm. was an attorney and, you know, a spokesperson and all these things and no one would have ever known looking from the yeah. outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the hardest part of, I know for me, it's like when I'm most depressed, I don't look no. the most depressed. No. You know, like mm -hmm. I make sure that day I may be looking probably better than I would on a normal day. Yeah. And that's, it's a real thing. Like it's you, high functioning depression. It's like you figure out a way to deal with it. But then when you're by yourself, it's like, it all hits. Yeah. It's low. It's low. Yeah. And, um, season three, I got really drunk and opened up about a suicide attempt I had when I was 22. And that I, I've always like, since I was a little kid, I've always dealt with depression. Like I remember things hitting me much harder than most people. And I would get depressed for no reason. Um, so I knew it wasn't situational. It wasn't like I had a bad day or somebody died. It was just like I would get in funks where I couldn't get out of bed and I would cry all the time and I would just be extremely low. Um, and I did try to commit suicide at 22. But now looking back, I kind of look at it very differently. I realized that I was just in a really dark place and I felt like I couldn't get out of it. It was and kind of like a cry for yeah, help. Yeah, and it was kind of a cry for mm -hmm. help. And I always now, I always tell my kids because depression is hereditary yeah. and I have two little boys and my mom's dealt with depression. I So I know it's something that my children possibly will uh, face in their lifetime. And I always tell my kids, I'm like, you know, there's nothing in the world that we can't fix together. And, you know, attempting suicide is a temporary solution or yeah. a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Most mm -hmm. of the time, and you always have like really high moments. And sometimes my lowest moments, I, you know, after I come out of them, there's so many amazing lessons and beautiful things I've learned and I'm a better person at the end of it, but just getting through those moments can feel like it just feels like you're in quicksand and you're, you're drowning. Um, but, uh, we had a friend, um, who's 12 year old, um, committed suicide during COVID. And I didn't realize that it hits kids that young until yeah. he did. And I am such an advocate of talking to especially children about it because kids don't see past, you know, today or tomorrow. And I think when I was younger in my twenties, I didn't see the big picture of life. Mm -hmm. Um, so I do think it's really, I love that you talk about it because I think it's something that people need to talk about because so many people deal with it. Mm -hmm. And when you don't hear about other people dealing with it, then you feel very alone You do, and you feel like you're kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like nobody yeah. understands you. Um, and it's something that I hid 
And I will say whenever I talked about it on TV, I've never felt more free in my life. Like I felt like for the first time I wasn't living a lie. having to yeah. hide. Yeah. Were, and I think the thing, because I always talk about like my generation, there's a lot of things that mm-hmm. we've done wrong. Yes. <laughs> but there's a lot of things too that the normalization of mental health, I feel like is something that I'm super proud of and mm-hmm. how it's normal to go to therapy and it's normal mm-hmm. to encourage it. And it's crazy. Even Chloe, I mean, she's 10, but she suffers from anxiety and depression. And like, she knows that she does. And I'm just so grateful for the tools that we have. Yeah. And it's, I, I started this thing and it's called neurofeedback and I don't know if you've heard of it, no. but it's, a game changer and I'm like scheduled for her to go and do it because they like put this cap on your head Mm -hmm. and it like mapping. Yeah. Well, it like shows anxiety, depression, trauma, abuse. Like it shows how your brain processes it. And for me, it just showed like a constant, like I was never in a constant state of anxiety or depression. I was constantly switching back and forth. So I was never in one place for too long. And then you do these sessions. You can go really however many times a week you want to go, but it's literally 30 minutes. And they just put these sensors on your head and you watch, you can listen to music or you can watch Netflix, but like the screen and sounds like it changes Uh and it's a game changer. Oh, I'm going to try that. It's neuro. Neuro feedback is what it's called. And it, it, at first I was like, okay, this sounds kind of like a, like a money grab, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then afterwards I was like, this is insane. And like days that I would do it, I would be exhausted and it's only 30 minutes, but it's like days that you do it. You're like, it just, it's crazy. You sleep so much better. You my I realized that like my fuse got longer, you know, cause I kind of can be a hothead and like if something, you know, I can yeah. go off really quick mm-hmm. and it slowed that down. And I was like, whoa, like it's, it's crazy. And then I had a friend who tried it with her son and he has got really bad ADHD and like in school it was almost impossible he was always in trouble and she said it was like a saving grace yeah that's for what her I had son. heard from it through um our kids and th- our, two of our kids go to a uh, school for learning differences and that's how I heard about it and um, mm-hmm. because they help it's been helping kids with learning differences yes oh, yes wow. mm-hmm. she literally said it was a saving grace for her son she was like he's perfect in school now he's wow. not acting out he's not yeah yeah okay so it's things I'm like that. Write that down after this That's yeah. Interesting. yeah it's things like that that I'm like so grateful for and that we're making a way mm-hmm. to normalize these things where it's like you don't feel crazy right. and you're like all right I'm not you know I'm yeah. going through what a ton of people are going through, especially since COVID, you've seen anxiety and depression like skyrocketing. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. it's, it's I a mean, normal it's, thing. I think it's been really recognized because even the public school systems have even put in place like to help kids because yeah. they, there's been so much loss and just not understanding like kind of where we went and where we're going. And, um, just, I don't know. And I, I think also when you have those, when you have depression and you're not able to talk about it or I mean, so it makes people feel insecure mm-hmm. and it makes you feel like, you know, just trapped mm-hmm. that you don't have it. And you said earlier, and I was like, that's the exact feeling when you said, when you feel empty, Yeah, mm-hmm. that's sort of what I remember is feeling empty. Like I need to just go because nobody believes in me. Nobody loves me. I'm worthless. Like, and I remember that empty feeling and, but nobody should feel that way. No. And the hardest part is it doesn't matter how many times someone says, oh, I'm so proud of you, or I love you so much. If you're not feeling it yourself and it's not being shown in a way that you can accept it, mm-hmm. like that's, you know, the five love languages, that book, when you read it, it's like, I, my love language may be just telling you, like, I love you, mm-hmm. but you may not receive it that way. Like you may have to have me show you that I love you or show like, and trying to understand people's love languages, I feel like has been a huge thing for me of like, just because I receive it in a way doesn't mean that you do. Yeah. And so trying to navigate that, not change who I am, but you do change. You learn to adapt to people. Yeah. 
That's interesting because you know, what's weird is like when somebody does something for me, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Is that weird? <laughs> like I'm like, no, 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 don't do it. I'll do something for you, but you don't do something for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One time Brandy canceled her own birthday party. I was trying to throw her three times. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 like, no. Got the Evi account. She was like, uh, I do not want to have a birthday anymore. And then the next day I'm like, are you sure? And then she's like, okay, you can do it. So then it's back on. And then she gets so uncomfortable. You've yes. always been so uncomfortable with that, but you're why, the most right? giving person. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't like to be celebrated. No. Why do you think that is? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it might have been just like growing up. I mean, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I think it was, yeah, probably my childhood. Like okay. we didn't really celebrate or do anything like that. <laughs> See, I, I mean, and that's kind of like something that, you know, I don't, I see that. And it's like, maybe that's where you go outside of your comfort zone mm-hmm. and you're like, you know, you take a time and allow people to celebrate you and allow yourself to feel like worthy of the celebration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You should. And, and then there's Stephanie's husband. Yeah. I was going to say birthday. he's like totally opposite. Yeah, he also he grew up where mm-hmm. he was never celebrated for his birthday with his mom or her dad, but it's almost like for his, and I, I, I'm going to be honest. I dread his birthday every year because he wants there to be a big celebration, but he also has these unrealistic expectations. Like you have to, <laughs> you have to like, uh, heal these childhood wounds of his yeah. birthday. And he's, but he's never really in a good mood on his birthday, but you have to do a big celebration. But you have to regardless. Yes. Yeah. So this year we're actually going to be at our, um, friend's wedding and his bachelorette parties that night. And I'm like, Oh, thank God. I don't have to throw Travis a birthday. He's just going to be at this bachelorette party. It's going to be amazing. Um, amazing. But yeah, it's, it's funny. I do. It's interesting how childhood, whether I guess we like to admit it or not, it shapes who we are. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. so, so much. Um, yeah. Well, I, I've learned that too. And through therapy, one of the biggest things I learned was like, I can't, anyone that I date, I can't expect them to be my dad, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, because like my dad, there was never a time to where like growing up, I never worried. Okay. Is dad coming home tonight? Is mm-hmm. mom coming home tonight? Like mom had dinner on the table every night. Dad, like I always knew where they were and yeah, I always yeah. knew they were going to show up. And I always like my dad invested so much time and energy into me and I've seen now with like the people that I date and I'm like, well, why can't they communicate like him? Like, why can't yeah. they, you know, and I've had to work through that of like, okay, it's really not fair for me to hold someone to a standard that I hold my dad to when he's, you know, he's gained my trust in everything over 25 years versus yeah. someone new that comes into the picture. And I think that was probably the biggest downfall of my last relationship was that he my like I'm so close with my dad and I expected the person that I was with to you know live up to those standards right while at the same time he maybe wasn't you know how can I expect that of a 27 year old Mm -hmm. my dad's fifth I don't know 53, 56, somewhere around there, somewhere <laughs> up in there. But, you know, I'm expecting something out of a 27-year-old that a 55-year-old is just now being able to give, yeah. you know? And yeah. that's, but you learn, like like you said, as a child, it shapes you. Yeah. And you have unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. or you have things that you try to fix through other people. And you, I feel like it's just part of it. Yeah, no, totally. I have to say, though, Um, you're an amazing woman and you're so strong and I just love you and your faith and your family's faith and your parents did an amazing job with y'all and y'all you're a product of the testimony to them. them, Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. And your dad was here earlier before we started this and he's just such a kind and amazing person. Like your whole family is so nice. I remember, um, whenever we first met you, um, and I was oh so gosh, stressed. It was like, um, <laughs> it was like over 10 years ago. It yeah. was a long time ago. It was before our show even started. Um, and you guys were the nicest people to us mm-hmm. that day. I mean, I mean, we met so many different, um, you know, people on TV through the NBC family. And by far you guys were oh, the ones that favorites. stuck out to us. You oh, guys were so, <laughs> so kind. And, and, like, also, yeah. and also 
going through like my deepest, darkest hours, your parents were there for me and reached out. I mean, y'all, you're yeah. just an amazing, beautiful family. And, and see, and that's the hardest part too, yeah. I think is like going through what we're going through right now. We're in like one of the toughest seasons we've ever been in. And I see all that. Cause with the way that I deal with things, I, and it's, I tr- I'm trying to get out of it, but I read everything mm-hmm. so that I'm prepared for anything that comes my way if someone says something and I see all the hateful things that are said and I'm like, that is not who my parents are. And like when you know who someone is and then you see all the hateful things that are being said, it's like, no, like my dad, this is the same man that showed up for my ex when he tried committing suicide and my dad stopped him. And it's the same, you know, my dad sat with him in a hospital. My dad, like he shows up for people time and time again, and he Mm -hmm. never does it for praise or he doesn't, you know, there's so many things that he does that no one, no one knows, ever knows about. And then it's just, you've got this like public perception that Mm -hmm. is so hard to not fight against. And then the moment you start fighting against it, people are like, Oh, you're trying to hide something. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, I know no. you cannot make people happy. I will say, yes, you're a uh, same thing with Brandy. Like one of the hardest seasons I had, your dad reached out to me as well, privately mm-hmm. on Instagram, just saying, I'm praying for you. And it's going to be, okay. it was just yeah. so like, that's very rare. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think for people think, to do, like to what care you said, enough. like the, you know, if people have misconceptions, like I, it's a hundred percent, like I don't know. Like it, it makes me just, I want to fight for y'all. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. Cause it's just, it's not, it's just not fair. Yeah. And that's, and that's honestly, there's been, and I say like, as hard as all of this has been, it's brought so many good people into our life who are, you know, stepping up and are, it was even Justin, whenever he was on my podcast, because Justin, he talks about everything controversial Uh on his Instagram, everything. Yes. And he was like, there's this weird obsession with like he and I on like with our followers. And they were always like, why aren't you talking about what's going on with the Chrisleys? Why aren't you? And he was like, you know what? I only speak about things to a certain extent. He was like, but when it comes to people's real lives, and stuff that's going on and especially people I care about, I'm not Not touching on it. Like I'm not, this is people's real lives Mm -hmm. that are falling apart in front of the world. Like I'm not going to sit here and bash them even further or, and you just see like people's loyalty and you also see the people who have always said that they're there for you, but that disappear. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. find out who your real friends are whenever times get hard. For that, I'm like so grateful. I'm like, Mm -hmm. as hard as this has been, I've seen who the real people are that are in my life. And I've seen my parents and their growth and with their faith and their, and that was the hardest part for me was like, I went through such a phase of anger because I was like, how are there two people that are so steadfast in their faith? And when I tell you like on their hands and knees praying, like humbling themselves to a place that they've never been. And then you see things play out the way they played out, you know, and there's like, you work through this anger and you work through, but it's also like, Hey, they wouldn't be where they're, they wouldn't be in their faith where they're at if it wasn't for this. So you have to find the silver lining and like, you got to have your breakdown to have your breakthrough. I'm a firm believer in that. And it's, I mean, it's hard. It's, I don't being in the public eye is not for the week. (laughs) That is for sure. That is for sure. But I do. I appreciate you guys just being so loving. I I love it. I love the fact that even the season that y'all are going through, y'all continue to put out your faith and Mm -hmm. you know, that God. And too, one thing I do want to say is just because we are faith-based, yes, we love Jesus, but also if people come at us, like, I'm sorry, it's hard to not defend yourself. Yeah. No, and people 100%. will say, oh, mm-hmm. if you want to talk about loving God, but you're going to out someone. Well, guess what? They went mm-hmm. to tabloids and like spread all this false stuff. And just cause I'd love Jesus doesn't mean I'm not going to call you out. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. hundred percent. Yes. Like, no, <laughs> people are like, Oh, you're so like, you're so fake. You want to talk about God, but then you're going to like, call someone out. And I'm like, but 
Yeah. I no, I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just correcting You're just saying the, narrative. the truth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like I'm just putting the truth out there and directing you on where to find the truth. Mm-hmm. And you know, all the people that have like worked years to tear us down and they don't want their dirty laundry coming out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, you shouldn't have like, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, no, I guess I love Jesus, but like I'm outing you. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that's, you know, people think just cause you talk about Jesus that you can't, you know? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like when Brian got me at, um, for our anniversary, he got me a clone the Willie thing. And <laughs> what is that? You clone you your penis, talking. basically. No. <gasps> yes. Stop. And people were like, <laughs> she, I thought she was Christian. I'm like, <laughs> well, guess what? It was his penis. <laughs> guess what? Christians get freaky too. They do. They do. You know, I have one friend and she's like, I love Jesus, but I love to cuss. Like, yeah. 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 Like, you oh learn. God. You're not always going to be perfect. I am too. Like we're human Sorry. beings. I know. Like, oh, goodness gracious. Oh well, I'm so blessed and thankful that y'all came to do my oh. podcast on New Year's oh. Eve too. Yeah, like, it's, it's a perfect day. It's a perfect day. We're gonna kick off the yes. new year with Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and maybe you know uh, some champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus and Jesus juice. Yeah. Hey, Jesus turned water into wine. Uh, Amen. You know? <laughs> well, thank you. I hope you guys have the best time. And thank you. I just you gotta come see you. us. And hey, I will. We, yes. I most certainly will. And I may see y'all tonight. Who knows? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs>